Okay, we're gonna do a couple of things before we get into the four poses today, just to kind of prep the hips and hamstrings. So if you have some sort of towel or yoga strap or belt or anything of that sort, that might help. If not, we can do it without the towel or strap. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to grab that if you have it. Okay, so today's four poses, um, get the hamstrings, the back of the thigh, and the hip flexors, which if you notice in a seated position, you know, imagine I'm in a chair, both my hip flexors are closed and my hamstrings are closed, right? This is an open hamstring, this is a closed. So all day long, both the hamstrings and the hip flexors are closed and what happens is after long periods of that the muscle itself starts to shorten it starts to weaken it starts to atrophy so before we get into the poses that are very heavy in both hamstrings and hips we're going to do some prep poses so you're going to start on your back and bring your strap or towel just with you and you're just going to lay on back and hug one knee up and into your heart for a few breaths so you can go ahead and lay back and just listen to the cues here. So just breathing as you gently let that knee soften into your chest, into your heart space. I sometimes play with letting the knee hug out towards the armpit gently and that'll kind of get into the hip crease a little bit more. This is actually a wonderful pose for digestion. If you hug the knee out to the side, bring it back to the heart, right forward, and then play with letting this other leg go long, and you'll start to feel that side, that hip flexor start to open. If that's too much, if there's pinching in the low back or pinching in the hip, slide that foot back in a little bit, a couple of breaths. All right, slide the long leg back in so that that foot goes flat. And then we're gonna take this foot to the sky. If you wanna use your strap or your towel, you'll place your foot in the towel. The leg does not have to go straight. Kind of relaxing through the arms if you can and just letting that hamstring start to open up. Now, Feel if you're jamming your hamstring straight. We don't want that. We want soft, soft, soft. So a lightness in, a light bend in the knee. All right, grab the strap with the same hand, both, ha both sides of the strap with the same hand and let your foot start to fall out away from your body. If you don't have a strap, hands can just be behind the thighs and you're holding it out to the side here like this. Just a few big breaths. Good, and then we'll come back to the sky, foot to sky. And then we'll release this foot. And then we'll start on the other side. So I'll do the other side without a strap in case you don't have one. Knee hugs in. And you're just starting to feel a gentle stretch through the hip, the low back. If hugging in on the shin hurts your knee, bring your hand underneath the knee, like behind the knee. You can hug me out to the side, see how that feels. And then bring the knee back to center. We're going to extend the other leg to see how this hip flexor is feeling. Just gently. Remember, we're 
ever looking for an intense stretch, maybe an intense core sensation, maybe an intense burning in the thighs when you're doing some yoga, but we're not looking for intense stretch. Good, slide that long leg back in and we'll take the left foot to the sky now. Again, foot in the strap or hands can come behind the thigh. Whenever you take a stretch to an intense place, your muscles are actually constricting and tightening because they're scared they're gonna get hurt. So they're not stretching at all. <laughs> and then in that case, you're just wrestling your own muscles. So sink in, let it breathe. Let it be a little soft, a little easy. And just notice that urge to push, to force, to make it happen and just walk yourself back out of that. And then let your foot start to drop out to the side. So use your hand to support the thigh or grab both of the straps in the same hand. Good. Bring that foot back to the sky and release both feet to the earth. We're going to drop the knees to one side and make fetal pose. And then you're going to press yourself up to a seat and then to a cat cow, uh, tabletop so that we can create cat cow. So we covered cat cow last week. We're just going to do a little bit of a flow because it does get into the hips here. So your hands are grounded, knuckles, fingertips, the whole hand is pressing. When you're ready, drop your belly, inhale, look up. And then on the exhale, let everything round. Good, back and forth. And really bring your awareness to your hips as you do this. Like the other parts are still flowing and bending, but just really waking up and noticing the hip. Maybe where it starts to get rigid or tight. Maybe where it feels best. Good, sway your hips side to side. And again, you can really do the whole spine if you'd like, or you can just bring the awareness to the hips. Good, slowly, just take a moment, find somewhere comfy so that you can sit and watch. So maybe just bring a block between the heels, you can sit in rock pose or just sit on your side. So I'm gonna demo the first pose and then we'll play. So the first pose is low lunge. Um, it has a couple of different names, but we're gonna just call it low lunge today. And I almost always recommend two blocks. If you don't have two blocks, one will do. Um, so the easiest way to come in is from your tabletop, you're gonna bring your right foot towards the right hand. And okay, you might have to like swing that foot around to get there, that's cool. You don't have to keep your hands on the ground, but you're gonna bring right foot to meet where the right hand is. We wanna keep this front knee and front ankle super safe. Uh, something I always see is people diving forward and their ankle's all weird and their knee is all forced. So we don't wanna um, force the knee to bend too much. So a knee right over ankle. And then we're trying to open up this hip, right? And so at this angle, it's kind of closed, just like it would be sitting. So for more stretch, you're gonna slide the back knee away, inch by inch, inch by inch. So here's where I like a block, at least under the left hand. So you have your right foot holding you up kind of, but their left hand could use a little support here. I like both hands with some support. So we're actually stretching a muscle called the psoas. And the psoas is directly connected to our lumbar spine. So when it starts to get tight, it actually pulls on your spine. So there are lots of variations we can play with um, where you raise your hands a little taller on the blocks. You can bring your hands to your thighs. If you're gonna bring your hands to your thighs, you're gonna engage your marble. Remember imaginary marble in the belly button, you're gonna 
pull it in so we're not just spilling forward. You can reach your arms up. You can clasp the hands behind the back to start opening the heart or even just rest them on the low back. And you can take a twist. The left hand will come to the earth, right arm will reach up and back. And then from here, there's an option to reach back for the back foot. So again, this pose is to open up the quads and the hip flexor. So let's play. Um, slowly come to, maybe your tabletop is where you want to start. And you're going to bring one foot. So if it's the left foot, it's going to come out to meet right around where the left hand is. That's a good starting spot. Then check in with your knee. Can you move it forward or backwards to get it over your ankle? And that might be enough. You might be feeling a stretch on that back hip. That's cool. You're probably wanting some height in the hands. So play with that. If you don't have two blocks, you can bring your hands to a chair. You might want to be closer. Right? That's a wonderful way to do it as well. So we're going to find the right amount of stretch for that back hip. So if you want, knee stays over the ankle. You can slide your back knee inch by inch back. If that knee is uncomfortable, you can put a pillow or a towel under the kneecap there. I like to tuck my toe. It feels weird when I don't, but it's up to you. So just take a couple breaths here into this hip. If there's a lot of stretch here, then just stay in this variation. The, the only thing you would want to do from here to start building is just to slowly lift your fingertips higher, your chest higher. Maybe one day you get hands to the thighs or reach the arms. But really you want it to be that comfortable stretch for you here today. So a few more big breaths. Of course, you can play and twist. You'll bring the opposite hand in and reach up and over. Nice. And then slowly we'll release. So to come out, I like to put my hands back on the blocks if you can or the chair and just start to straighten that front leg gently until you can slide it back out. And then you'll be in your little tabletop. You can wiggle, you can stretch. All right, then we'll try whatever side you didn't do. So bring the other foot up either outside the block or the hands. Check in with that front knee, front ankle, and then you'll take the back knee back to open up the hip flexor. Just a few breaths. Remember, our front foot is the foundation here, so you're gonna still be present and aware and pressing into that foot. Your marble is still engaged into your belly button, just slightly, a few more breaths to play. Maybe you practice reaching or just hands on the thighs, nice. Sometimes when I start to reach, I start to feel it in my low back. And that's usually because either my hip flexor is just too tight and I'm going too far or I'm not engaging my core enough. So if I give myself a little check and I pull my core in, in the back, still bugs me, that just tells me, nope, not today. Hands back down. Take a time, maybe add a twist. Good, one more big breath here. And then we'll slowly just lengthen, and lift the hips, straighten through the front leg gently to where you can shimmy it back out. Might feel good to take a child's pose or just to come to your hip and rest. All right. So if you have any questions, if there was anything that was painful or you just couldn't quite get um, figured out, I can walk you through now. That's fine. A good one? Good one, perfect. Okay. It's also a balancing pose. You probably felt that. Um, can't reach back and grab my other foot. Yet. Well, again, I'm teaching two people that are in all different positions that have been 
practicing and some people just naturally have certain angles that are flexible. You have had a hip replacement. This might not be something you're going to be able to access right away, you know? Um, it re and reaching back also requires your quads to be really loose, you know, open and flexible, your hip flexor, your shoulders. So it's a lot of components to reaching back. Um, okay. So then we will move on to the next one, which is half split. So again, you can watch for just a moment if you'd like. We're pretty much gonna be coming from the same position. So I'm gonna just go ahead and keep my hands on the blocks, but again, you, your hands can be on the earth or your chair. You're gonna bring your right foot outside of the right hand. So now, I pretty much like to get into a nice low lunge to start. So I'll kind of scooch my knee back and figure out what feels good low lunge wise. Front knee is over the ankle. Half split is what it sounds like. You're gonna shift your hips back and then just start to lengthen through the front leg. So a full half split would be like hands on the ground, spine nice and long. Some people can get their, their chest down on the legs, but you don't wanna really be like rounding towards the leg. You want your spine to stay long. So that's why the blocks are helpful. Put them as tall as you need them. It's also nice to bring a bend to this front leg so that your heart can stay open. Again, my hands could be on the chair right here in front of me. And you're just lengthening softly through this hamstring. There's not a lot of variation, but it is fun to flow back and forth between this pose and the low lunge. So that's what we're going to do. So um, if you have any um, questions, you can kind of wake me down. Otherwise, you can start to play with half split. So another common mistake I see, and it's not necessarily a mistake, it's just a lot of pressure, is people will walk all the way back to where they're sitting on this back leg. Again, that's a lot of pressure on the knee, it's a lot of pressure on the ankle. So I usually try to um, advise people to, if that's happening, inch your foot out more so that when you sit, sit back, you have lots of space. You're kind of trying to, to square your hips if that, you know, not perfectly, but you want to look back and see if like maybe left hip is swinging this way or right hip is way out here. If you're ready, we can start to flow between the two. So low lunge, I even walk my blocks forward into the low lunge, you know, gentle lift of the heart. And then I walk myself back. And then forward. Maybe one more time. Getting hamstring. The hamstrings are very strong muscles that are often poorly maintained just because of our lifestyles of sitting and standing. Good, all right, so from your half split, you'll just kind of shimmy that foot back out. Shake your hips side to side, do whatever you like. And then you can switch sides and play with half split on the other side. So other foot comes towards the hand. Kind of set yourself up for a nice open low lunge. So shimmy the back knee back if you need. Shin stays over the front ankle, then shift back. You're just kind of lifting your hips, letting your heart stay long. Some teachers will teach to round forward. Some teachers will teach to stay long and um, through the spine. Usually what I say is do which one feels best. And if a teacher's teaching you a specific one, there might be a reason why she's teaching or he is teaching that. So if it doesn't feel safe, do which version feels best. And then we'll add a flow. So shift forward into low lunge, heart lifts, opening the right hip flexor. And then shift back, opening the left hamstring. Maybe get a little breath going back and forth. Good. One, you're to your next half split. You can shimmy that foot out, take whatever you need, maybe child's pose, maybe just take a little seat. 
Good. So that sequence is so great to get you out of your desk, out of your chair. Um, and to, again, like I said, to bring some movement to those muscle groups, the hamstrings and the hip flexors that stay closed during seated positions. When they get tight, they start to actually pull on your bones and your hips. So when everything gets tight, our hips start to move in different directions, not because we're moving them, but because our hip flexors are so tight, our hips start pulling forward. Or our hamstrings are so tight, our hips start tilting backwards. And that's when little back aches and hip aches really start to creep in. How was that one? Half split. Great. Great. Any, um, anything that needs tweaking? Well, when my foot was here, and then when I was going back, is the foot supposed to go further out front or leave it right where it is? The front foot? Yeah, this front foot. Yeah, you just- I kind of moved it out in order to get it straight. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to go straight. So if this is where you're getting, yeah. then you just stay. Okay. What I, because then, especially when you want to rock forward and backwards, if you were to slide your foot out yeah. and then try to go forward, you're not in the same, you know? Okay. Eventually, if anything, instead of trying to, instead of trying to jam this leg straight, think about lifting your hips up, like your heart and your hips up. That will start to create more space for the front leg. What if they don't go up? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a huge movement. This, this movement actually gets a back bend. It's a fold. Right, we're folding at the hips. It's balanced because you got, you know, we're kind of here. But you're actually almost doing a back bend because you're lifting your spine as you fold forward. And it's prepping you for, you know, traditional fold forward. Ragdoll. Hmm? Ragdoll. Ragdoll, yeah, cl close. I, I always bend my knees in um, forward fold, but yeah, so it looks like ragdoll. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is pyramid, and it's a variation from half split. So again, this one is also a forward fold, and there's a little bit of a back bending happening because we're trying not to just sink forward. We're trying to keep our spine long as we fold forward. It's also bringing balance. Um, I love this one because it's inwards, kind of like child's pose. You can use it to kind of calm your mind because. You're just looking down on your mat, your feet, your pose. And of course it gets the hamstrings um, and the posture muscles I just talked about. So it's pyramid pose. So there's a way to do it from standing, but I'm just gonna teach it from the half split forward fold sequence we were in. So again, I love two blocks. I was a gymnast my whole life and I have great flexibility, great balance, great strength. I still love two blocks every single practice. Uh, so right foot's going to come out for our low lunge, right? I'm going to slide my back knee back to find something that feels good. For half split, I mean, uh, yeah, half split would be like this, right? We're going to build this pose, but standing. So what you're going to do is you're going to tuck the back toe and lift the knee. And then you're going to bring that foot in a handful, handful, a foot full, <laughs> foot's length forward. I usually recommend starting with a nice tall block. And pyramid pose looks something like this. So there are some things um, you can play with when it comes to the feet. Some teachers will teach that you want your heels to be in a line, like your heels. Your back foot will kick out 45 degrees, but you can feel that that's very balancey. And it also is kind of tight in the hips for me to put everything on one tight rope. Some people love that. What I like is my feet to be more like a railroad track. So my right foot's in line with my right hip and my left foot's in line with my left hip, right? About the same distance. <laughs> so you, because there's some balance involved, you wanna really have your feet awake yeah, we can try it from up top. Keep your, hand, keep your blocks in your hands good, I like that. So your feet are awake. Our hips are kind of squared towards the front. It's not gonna be perfect. If your hips are a little kicked off to the side, that's okay, but we're trying to kind of 
align ourselves so that our hips <laughs> stay forward. So we're gonna pull the imaginary marble in and then you can slowly you can bring your hands to your hips if you want. If you have your blocks, keep your blocks. No, keep your, keep your blocks. Because we're gonna come down. A little bend in the front knee is nice. And then the hands will rest on your blocks, on your chair, your footstool. And then we're trying to lengthen through the spine a little bit. And then if it feels good, you can start to kind of fold forward. Maybe your head relaxes down. Ways to advance this is, of course, without the blocks, hands coming to the earth. But again, um, you can start by lowering the blocks and then lowering the blocks and then lowering the blocks. Some people like to do a variation with the hands behind the back. So if you want to play with that, bend your front knee, press through your feet, and we're going to rise back up, wake up the balance muscles, hands to hips. Good. All right. So this one's hard for even me. <laughs> But just so that in case you're like, how do I go further with this one? There's something called reverse namaste. Namaste is hands at prayer. There's reverse where the hands, and again, mine don't quite go all the way. The hands do like prayer position behind. That is intense for my wrist. So you can just do hands behind the back here, low back, whatever. And you're trying to keep your heart open. All right, so wake up the feet. Pull your imaginary marble into your belly button, and then you'll just start to fold forward. So you're kind of opening the shoulders behind you. And some people will keep the reverse namaste, the prayer pose all the way down. What I like to do is kind of hang out for a few breaths, and then I release hands down and melt down for the last few breaths. All right, let's come all the way back up again. Bend the front knee, press through your feet, rise up, hands to hips. Good. And then we'll just build it the other side. So step your feet to mountain. The other foot's gonna go back, maybe about three or four feet. Decide whether you wanna try feet on a tight rope where the heels are in the same line. The back foot's kicked open just gently. Or you can bring the feet about hip width apart and start there. Waking up the feet, the core is here. A little softness in that front knee. I just kind of let it do what it needs to do as I fold forward. Slowly bringing hands to the blocks or to your chair to start. There are a lot of days where in the beginning of the pose, in the practice, I start with full blocks, but then by the end, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can melt down. But I always give myself a moment to check in with props, with blocks, moving slow. Not just assuming I know where my body needs to go. I'm letting my body dictate where to go. So a few more breaths here. If you want, you can rise up and try the reverse prayer or hands behind the back variation, it's up to you. Maybe just go inwards and breathe. Good, bend your front knee, slowly rise up hands to hips, and then slowly just bring your feet together. Ah, shake it out. How'd that one do? Good. Good? My one this side's tighter. Yeah, is that your good or bad hip? That's or, the one that needs help. That's the one that needs some help. Yeah, okay, that's, that's, um, that's common, you know, that's, that's not anything that would be unusual. All right. So we have one more before we flow them all together. And this is one of my absolute favorites. 
It is a grounding pose, meaning again, you can kind of, you feel stable and you can kind of go inwards. You're looking down at your mat. Um, it gets the hamstrings and the low back really um, lengthened and open. And then there's a ton of ways to play with it. And each time I come to this pose and each time I teach this pose, I give myself and my students freedom to pick a variation that feels really good that day. So we'll learn the basics and then I'll show you a ton of fun ones to play with. So this one is called wide leg forward fold and you do it sideways generally so that you have space on your mat. So you guys wanna make sure that you're not gonna bump your head on each other's bums or <laughs> heads or coffee tables. And so you're gonna have your feet um, starting at least parallel to each other, facing the edge of your mat. You can turn the toes in, some people like that, because it kind of stretches a little differently, but you do not want your toes to be pointed out. As we fold, if your toes are pointed out, this might be a little advanced here, but if your toes are pointed out, imagine my hands are my feet, if your toes are pointed out, your actual hip bones are going closer to each other, right? They're coming closer and then we're gonna fold and it's just kind of, everything's a little jarred up. So if they're forward or even in your hips, see how your, if you were to imagine my shoulders as my hips, your hips are actually opening and then you can fold in. So toes are either straight ahead or slightly in, and then same thing. You can have your blocks in your hands for the first one here, or maybe hands on hips. Marble's gonna pull in, and your feet are gonna be pressing. They're flat, they're pressing into the earth. They're holding you up. You're not just like sinking into your feet, right? Press into your feet, that means your thighs are awake, your core is awake, and you're just gonna slowly start to fold down. Hands coming to your chair, your blocks, and let's start with just a nice long spine. So bring whatever you have, your hands to something so that your heart can kind of lift and be long. And you can play with the width of your feet. Maybe try a little wider, maybe that might open up your back, your spine might feel a little safer or maybe closer. Good, now, very gently, and you can always soften the knees, you can bend the knees. You're just gonna see if you can start to fold down. Now, if your low back is tight or cranky today, this might be enough. You might not need the fold. But as you fold, you can soften through the knees. Maybe your blocks get closer to the earth. Maybe your hands come to the earth. What you're trying to see if you can get to happen is for your head to relax. Your shoulders to kind of gently relax. Again, if this is too much hanging on the back, try bending the knees first. If that's too much, then just stay in the nice kind of tabletop version for today. All right, so let's slowly come about halfway up again to the tabletop version. So whether your hands are on the ground or on your blocks, and we're gonna play with some variations and we're kind of doing this all together, so. What I want you to do is bend into one knee and just start to sink towards that side. You might not go too low. And then try the other side gently. Try that a couple times. I will demo just because I know people will probably ask about it. There is a version where people come all the way down into like a little stance here. It's pretty intense. Um, I only get there every once in a while. You wanna keep the knee and the ankle safe, heart high. All right, so let's do a different variation. You can put hands on blocks if you want. You're gonna walk your hands towards the one foot so your legs stay straight and long. They can have a little softness, of course and you're just kind of walking over to one foot. You'll feel a stretch through the side body, through one hip a little more than the other, one hamstring a little more, and then walk to the other side. So again, this kind of gets your shoulders, your hips, your ribs, the side body a little bit. Good, 
we'll come back to center. We're gonna take a couple of twists. If you have your hands on your blocks, you're gonna bring one of the blocks right underneath your heart, and that hand is gonna stay. Uh, one hand's gonna stay on that block, and the other one's gonna start to reach. Start just by lifting the elbow. If it feels safe, you can reach the whole hand, but don't force that shoulder. And then try the other side. Melt down. If that's too intense, turn your block higher. Use your chair or footstool. And then back down. Good. We're going to do one more here. This might be, um, we have about two more that are a little more on the advanced, but I'll demo just so you know. So we did the twist at the top. You can do a twist at the bottom where you're hanging and you take opposite hand to opposite leg. So maybe it grabs the thigh, the knee, the ankle, the calf, and then you just start to twist like you're turning your head under that shoulder. And then you can try the other side, twist the other hand to the other side. So now your twist is kind of happening. You're still lifting your tailbone, still pressing through your feet. Good, back to center. Bend both knees here for a moment. We got one more variation. And um, it is a, um, you might wanna take a breather here if you need to, you can stand up. Um, it is called wringing out your shoulders. I have fairly tight shoulders, so I would use a towel or a strap. And what happens is in the fold, you will grab the strap or towel behind your back. You can widen your hands as much as you'd like and you're gonna to start to, um, before you start to lift your hands, you're gonna take a shoulder roll, squeeze your shoulder blades together so that your heart is open and then the hands can start to float away from the high knee. Don't force this. And if you need to widen the grip, widen the grip. Little bend in the knees, don't force it. Two more breaths. Good, slowly let your hands come back down by your hips. Bend your knees and roll up one vertebra at a time. Perfect. I'm gonna demo one more thing that starts to prepare you for a headstand. So again, pretty advanced, um, but it is a common way to start learning headstand. So I'm gonna stay sideways so that you can see my head on the ground. So you'll forward fold. And before you ever get to this, the goal is to work towards getting your head to touch the ground, right? So that would be goal number one, heads touching the ground. My hands are out in front, my forearms are parallel, my triceps are parallel. And then you're just starting to press into your hands and lift here. And then of course, one day, if you wanted, you could start to float into headstand. We're not gonna go there today, but this is a version of forward fold that would prep you for that. Hmm, let's check in. Nope. <laughs> well, first of all, your feet are too close to try and get your head to the ground. I did headstand yesterday. Oh, okay, good, okay, good. Yeah, put your feet wider, bring your hands to the earth, mommy. I'll tell you if it looks safe or not. Yeah, you're, you're not too terrible there. You might you even take your feet a little wider if the hamstrings are okay, the inner thighs. She'll yeah. get it, she'll get it. I know, yeah. but don't force it. Any, yeah, anytime you feel like you're having to, like you're like, oh, I'm so close, I'm just gonna push in, yeah. usually a bad idea. <laughs> All right, so any other questions with any of the variations for wide leg forward fold? for what it's supposed to be stretching, for where you're supposed to be feeling it. It's it's stretching things that haven't been stretched in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a really great pose because it's an inversion. Pyramid poses too, like your head ends up below, but this one a little more because you can get your head lower than your hips. And so it's bringing blood flow to your brain. It's bringing, uh, it's like reversing circulation and moving circulation. Um, when we stay seated, our hips and our hamstrings, because they're stagnant, there's less circulation. 
there's less blood flow. And so everything just starts to kind of atrophy and weaken. So getting us upside down, opening the hips, opening the hamstrings, it's a really great pose to counter a lot of seated um, activities. It's also really good for fatigue, just getting your body upside down and then your blood's flowing a little differently. Everything's a little, you know, you've kind of released through the shoulders. So it helps to kind of wake you up a little bit. And it's also really good for mild depression. Um, that pose and wheel pose or bridge pose are my two favorites if I'm feeling a little funky. So cool. All right, so we only have a couple minutes left. So we'll do a round or two of just flowing through. So I will just kind of call it out if you want and you guys can follow along. But we're gonna start hands and knees tabletop and I would recommend grabbing your blocks. Again, if you don't have blocks, grab whatever um, props you can. And this is just to practice moving in and out of the poses we just learned. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put my hands right on the blocks. And I'm gonna take a couple cat cows here, just opening the heart, rounding the heart. Good. We're gonna lift the right knee up off the earth, start to pull it towards your nose and see if you can start to bring it to the top of your mat towards your right hand. Mm -hmm. Stack the knee over the ankle. Give yourself some more space for your low lunge here. Take a breath or two to do whatever you'd like. Maybe fingertips to the blocks. Maybe you reach up. Pressing through your feet. Pulling the core in. Good, we're gonna slowly melt to half split. So hands to the blocks. Lift the hips as you melt forwards. Just lengthening through the legs. We're gonna shift forward into low lunge and then to pyramid pose. So lift the back foot, hop it in and find the alignment you like here, whether it's tight rope or railroad tracks. And then see if you can keep your heart long, your spine long, heart open as you melt in, maybe eventually rounding, bending that front knee if you'd like. Take a couple breaths to go inward here. All right, we're gonna walk our hands towards the left side of your mat and your toes will spin open to wide leg forward fold. Yep, so feet, make sure they're awake, make sure they're straight ahead and then melt in and breathe. Couple of breaths to play with any of the variations we learned or any other variation you'd like. One of my other favorites is just grabbing opposite elbows and hanging like we would do in ragdoll. All right, bring your hands back to your blocks. We're gonna walk to the back side of your mat to build pyramid. So you're gonna turn that toe towards the back of the mat, one hand on each side of the foot, and then align your feet for pyramid. Melting in, breathing big. If you do wanna play with a little bit more balance, you can bring one hand to the ankle or both that changes your balance significantly. Some people like to reach for the back thigh, back leg. Good, we're gonna turn this into low lunge just for a moment. So drop your back knee slowly, gently. And then we're gonna half split, so shift back. If you need to, give yourself more space because we're coming in from a different angle. And then low lunge, shift forward. Take a few breaths. Good, we're gonna find tabletop. So use your hands on your blocks, scooching that knee out and take any wiggles that feel good. All right, we're gonna do the same thing going back, but just a little quicker, okay? 
So we're going to bring left foot forward, low lunge. Slide that back knee back if you need. Good, half split. Pyramid pose, so lean back uh, into the front foot, lift the back heel, slide it in, melt in. Wide leg forward fold, spin your toes to the right this time. Widen your stance as much as you need, toes straight ahead and melt in. Slowly crawl to the top of your mat. We'll build pyramid here. One block on each side of the front foot. Align your feet and melt in. All right, bend the front knee gently and take this foot back a little bit so that you can find your low lunge. Shift half split. Low lunge. And then tabletop hands and knees. Take your time, wiggle. And then just let's end with a nice child's pose. Big toes together, knees wide or narrow. Rest your head somewhere. Slowly you can run. Take a moment to thank yourself for showing up, to thank your body for all that work. Hmm. May you find happiness in the root of all happiness. Namaste.